O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Let all on earth their voices raise, re-echoing hands triumphant praise to him who gave the apostles grace to run on earth a glorious race. Thou at whose word they bore the light of gospel truth are he the night to us that heavenly light impart to glad our eyes and cheer our heart. Thou at whose will to them was given to bind and loose in earth and heaven, our chains unbind our sins unto and in our hearts thy grace renew. Thou in whose might they spoke the word, which cured disease and health restored, to us its healing power prolong. Support the weak, confirm the strong. Simon Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. And the firm and chose forth the work of his hands. Day unto day takes up the story, and night unto night makes known the message. No speech, no word, no voice is heard. Yet their span extends through all the earth. Their words to the utmost bounds of the world. There he has placed a tent for the sun. He comes forth like a bridegroom coming from his tent. Rejoices like a champion to run its course. At the end of the sky is the rising of the sun. To the furthest end of the sky is its course. There is nothing concealed from its burning heat. Give praise to the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and for ages unending. Amen. Simon Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I must glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In my voice, O God, as I complain, got my life from dread of the foe. I breathe from the band of the wicked, from the throng of those who do evil. 
They sharpen their tongues like swords. They aim bitter words like arrows. To shoot the innocent from ambush. Shooting suddenly and recklessly. They scheme their evil cause. They can spot a secret snares. They say, who will see us? Who can search at our crimes? He will search who searches the mind and knows the depths of the heart. God has shot them with his arrow and dealt them sudden wounds. Their own tongue has brought them to ruin and all who see them mock. Then will all men fear. They will tell what God has done. They will understand God's needs. The just will rejoice in the Lord and fly to Him for refuge. All the upright hearts will glory. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I must glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, if it is you, bid me come to you over the waters. The Lord is King, let earth rejoice. Let all the coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice and right. A fire prepares his path, it burns with his foes on every side. His lightnings light up the world, the earth trembles at the sight. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice, all people see his glory. Let those who serve idols be ashamed, those who boast of their worthless gods. All you spirits worship him. Zion is and is glad. The people of Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments, O Lord. For you indeed are the Lord. Most high above all the earth. Exalted far above all spirits, the Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the souls of his saints. He sets them free from the wicked. Light shines forth for the just, and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice, you just in the Lord. Give glory to his holy name. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, if it is you, bid me come to you over the waters. The word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the gospel which has been preached to you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. He who had set me apart from the day of my birth and called me by his grace, saw fit to make his son known in me so that I could preach his gospel among the Gentiles. My first thought was not to hold any consultations with any human creature. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who had been apostles longer than myself. No, I went off into Arabia, and when I came back, it was to Damascus. Then when three years had passed, I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Peter, and I stayed a fortnight there in his company. But I did not see any of the other apostles, except James, the Lord's brother. Such is my history. As God sees me, I am telling you the plain truth. Afterwards, I travelled into other parts of the world, Syria and Cilicia, and all the time I was not even known by sight to the Christian churches of Judea. They only knew me by hearsay. The man who used to persecute us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy, and they praised God for what he had done in me. Then, after an inter interval of 14 years, once again I went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and Titus also accompanied me. I went up in obedience to a revelation, and there I communicated to them, only in private, to men of repute, the gospel I always preach among the Gentiles. Was it possible that the course I had taken, and was taking, was useless? And it is not even true to say that they insisted on my companion Titus, who was a Greek, being circumcised. We were only thinking of those false brethren who had insinuated, insinuated themselves into our company so as to spy on the liberty which we enjoy in Christ Jesus, meaning to make slaves of us. To these we did not give ground for a moment by way of obedience. We were resolved that the true principles of the gospel should remain undisturbed in your possession. But as for what I owe to those who were of some repute, it matters little to me who or what they were. God makes no distinction between man and man. These men of repute, I say, had nothing to communicate to me. On the contrary, those who were reputed to be the main support of the church, James and Cephas and John, saw plainly that I was commissioned to preach to the circumcised, as Peter was to the, correction, saw plainly that I was commissioned to preach to the uncircumcised, as Peter was to the circumcised, he whose power had enabled Peter to become the apostle of the circumcised, had enabled me to become the apostle of the Gentiles. And so recognising the grace God had given me, they joined their right hands in fellowship with Barnabas and myself, the Gentiles were to be our province, the circumcised theirs. Only we were to remember the poor, which was the very thing I had set myself to do. You are Peter, and it is upon this rock that I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. And I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. A reading from the Sermons of St. Augustine. This day has been made holy by the martyrdom of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul. I am not here speaking of some unknown martyrs. For their fame has penetrated every land, and their message has reached the ends of the earth. These martyrs saw what they proclaimed. They followed the path of integrity, professed the truth, and died for it. The blessed Peter, foremost of the apostles, the passionate lover of Christ, heard his merits acknowledged. I say to you that you are Peter. He had himself declared, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ replied, I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. He meant, 
Upon this rock I will build the faith which you profess. Because you said to me, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, I will build my church on you, for you are Peter. Peter's name is derived from the word for a rock, and not vice versa. In the same way a Christian is named after Christ. The Lord Jesus, before his passion, chose, as you know, certain disciples whom he called apostles. In a virtually unique way, Peter represented the entire church. In his capacity as representative of the whole church, these words were fittingly addressed to him. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. It was not one man, but the whole Christ, which received these keys. Peter's prominence was acknowledged inasmuch as he stood for the one universal church when the Lord said to him, I will give you the power that was given to all, that you may understand that the church received the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Remember that our Lord said to all his apostles, receive the Holy Spirit, and added immediately, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven, whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. It was logical too for the Lord to entrust the care of his sheep to Peter after his resurrection. He was not, of course, the only disciple worthy of this responsibility. When Christ spoke to one, all were included. Peter was addressed first because he was the foremost, foremost apostle. Do not be dismayed, Peter. Answer once, twice, three times. Your confession of love must be proclaimed three times because your presumption was three times dashed by your feet. Correction, by your fear. The knot you, try, you tied three times must be as often untied. Untie from love what you tied from fear. In spite of all, the Lord three times entrust, entrusted his sheep to Peter. One day is a sign for the celebration of the martyrdom of two apostles. But those two were one. Although their martyrdom occurred on different days, they were one. Peter went first. Paul followed. We celebrate the feast day, which is made sacred for us by the blood of these apostles. Let us love their faith, their life, their trials, their passion, their profession and their teaching. O oh, Paul, teacher of truth, an apostle of the Gentiles, you are truly worthy of honour. Through you all nations have known the grace of God. You are truly worthy of honour. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as the Lord, everlasting Father, all the world bows down before you, all the angels sing your praise, the hosts of heaven and all the angelic powers, all the cherubim and seraphim, call out to an unending song, holy, holy, Holy is the Lord God of angel hosts. The heavens and the earth are filled with your majesty and glory. The glorious band of apostles, the noble company of prophets. The white groups of you shed their blood for Christ. All sing your praise. And to the ends of the earth, your holy church proclaims her faith in you. Father, whose majesty is boundless, your true and only Son, who is to be adored, the Holy Spirit sent to be our advocate, you Christ, the King of glory, Son of the Eternal Father. When you took our nature to save mankind, you did not shrink from birth in the virgin's womb. You overcame the power of death, opening the Father's kingdom to all who believe in you. Enthroned at God's right hand in the glory of the Father, 
you will come in judgment according to your promise. You redeemed your people by your precious blood. Come, we implore you to our aid. Grant us with the saints a place in eternal glory. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, you give us the great joy of devoting this day to the honour of the Apostles Peter and Paul. Grant that your church may follow their teaching to the full, because these are the men who first taught us to worship you. <coughs> <coughs> who first taught us to worship you in Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.